the last nine. The Rebels didn't play the best of games. They're going to have to play better if they want to beat Loyola Marymount sure will. tomorrow. Remember last year at this time, the Rebel fans were making their reservations for Seattle and that trip to the Final Four? Well, Seton Hall had something to say about that and knocked the Rebels out of the Final Eight. Tomorrow, it's the Rebels against Loyola Marymount. Once again, the renter, winner gets a trip to the Final Four. It's at Denver this year. Steven Jackson has been in Oakland most of the week. He's at the Park Plaza Hotel tonight. Steve, uh, the Cinderella, Ball State, almost jolted the Rebels on their way uh, to the big party. The Rebels did just about everything they possibly could last night to throw that game away. They're definitely a better team than Ball State. Should have won big, only won by two, but a win is a win. Let's take a look at the action from last night's Ball State UNLV game. The fans were excited, those who had tickets, that is. A mix-up had some 400 UNLV backers stranded in Oakland without a way inside the Coliseum. The Rebels came out of the chute roaring. The Cardinals of Ball State appeared stuck in suspended animation. They were totally out of sync and unable to keep up with UNLV, and the running Rebels ran up an 11-point lead at 17-6. Just when some of the Rebel faithful were starting to relax in their seats, Ball State bounced back, pulling to win one point of UNLV. Center Larry Johnson led a mini rally as UNLV kept the Cardinals at bay, but moments later, they were back knocking at the door against UNLV again. Chandler Thompson electrifying the crowd with that big dunk. Once again, though, UNLV met the Cardinals' surge. A Travis by three-pointer was crucial. We had to play a tough, tough game, and you have to come up with the big plays. If they make a run at you, you have to make a run right back. The Cardinals couldn't catch the Rebels, but they were never out of hailing distance either. David Butler of UNLV got the Rebels an eight-point lead at 67-59 as the game went down to crunch time. A couple of Ball State three-pointers and some awful Rebel foul shooting made it a two-point game. Ball State had a couple of real opportunities at the end, but the Rebels held on to win it the final 69-67. As expected, the two head coaches had wildly different views of the crucial play at the end when Paris McCurdy fumbled the ball away. We tried to get McCurdy on the drive, which I think Al Davis would have been proud of that play that Johnson made. Larry almost got the steal. I thought the kid, when he stumbled, he traveled, but there was no call. Fortunately, they didn't score on it. You know, I think Coach Dick Hunsacker of Ball State may have picked up on something. Larry has always looked a heck of a lot more like a tight end than a forward anyhow. But all kidding aside, that was a tough call, and I think the officials made the right call, which was no call. So UNLV wins. They will play Loyola Marymount tomorrow, 1 o'clock, at the Oakland Alameda Coliseum Arena. It should be a classic. It's going to be a lot better game than the first time the two teams met way back in November at the Thomas and Mack Center. That's how I see it, Ron. Now, how do you see it? See, well, what do you think of this matchup uh, tomorrow? If the Rebels play like they played last night, there's no way they're going to beat Loyola. they got to hit from the outside. Anderson Hunt's got to have a hot game. Against Loyola, you got to hit the perimeter shot, don't you think? Isn't that the consensus there, pretty much? I totally agree with you. If they don't hit from outside, they're dead in the water against Loyola Marymount. They've got to play with great emotion. They've got to hit from outside. And I got to go, Ron. All right, Steve. We're going to have uh, a report from you tonight at 11 o'clock, and we'll hear later from Steve Jackson. On to the east now, Connecticut. Remember the last second shot two nights ago that beat Clemson?